Honestly, my heart breaks to see how nature is going through a lot of problems and it's all due to our irresponsible behavior. To me, we have the strongest economy perhaps I have ever seen. See that number this morning, that unemployment number? It's the best in years, not best in 69. Begin tonight with the staggering inflation that is hitting Americans right in the wallet. Prices were up 6.8 percent in November compared to a year ago. That is the biggest increase in nearly 40 years. I believe in this place and in my love of country, I yield to no one. But the darkness on the edge of town has spread to the main roads and highways and neighborhoods. It's now at the local bar and the bowling alley, at the school board and the grocery store. And it must be acknowledged and answered for. Just know, just know, my whole adult life has been nothing but this experience. There was one time I was, or two times, I could legitimately say I was making above the living wage. And I was completely comfortable and not feeling guilty about making large purchases that anyone should be able to make at any point in American history. Like, hmm, I don't know, a mattress or a used car. I'm a little bit surprised that CBS is doing this, but I'm not really at this point. It's pretty much common knowledge, and how and why we keep up with it is beyond me. That maybe in the end, we would be, we would love our enslavement. I'm not too sure what kind of analysis you can take from this, but either way, imagine not being able to make a living wage and realizing you have no future. What kind of man can stand up to that? What kind of man can stand up to that. What kind of man can stand up to that? Let's watch this clip. A changing job market and what has been a very strange year for American workers. On the one hand, the number of unemployed people looking for full-time work has plunged to the same level it was before the pandemic. But at the same time, Americans have been quitting in record numbers for months, leaving 11 million positions empty. COVID, of course, is one factor, but some experts see this lingering I quit movement as a sign that America has plenty of jobs, but not enough of what most consider to be good ones. On a sunny day in Battle Creek, Michigan. Hey, I'm Tony. Dijon Lucius. Nice, nice to meet you, Dijon. Dijon. We met this 30-year-old father of three. What you doing at school today? Who for the past two years has worked at the Kellogg cereal plant part of a decades old tradition of solid middle class work here in Cereal City. When you got the job, I was ecstatic. I told everybody that day. I called my mom. I uh, told my wife was happy. But while many line workers at Kellogg still have a pension, premium health care, and great wages, other workers like Dijon Lucius have a very different deal. No pension, pricier health care, and less pay than colleagues who do the exact same job. We literally work side by side. Side by side. Side by side. But you're making 13 or $15. $15 less. $15 less. Yes. So there's two classes of worker at Kellogg? Yes. And you're in the lower class? Lower, yes. It's called a two-tier contract. And since the 1980s, companies in dozens of industries have used it to cut costs, lowering pay for new hires like Dijon, and turning what once felt like some of America's best jobs into something else. How important would that Quick $15 break. be to your Okay, is this not wage slavery or what? Taking all that into consideration, I want to also point out the fact 5.5 trillion or increase of 68%. That's the increase in wealth in the world's 2,690 billionaires between March 2020 and July 2021. This is more than the wealth accrued by billionaires in the past 15 years. 4.4 trillion is all it would have took instead of going to 2,690 people's pockets to give a one-off $20,000 cash grant to all currently unemployed workers. But we don't live in a country like this. And as we'll begin to see, it's always been about I. Life. I could buy a house. I could finish putting up for my kids' college savings. That's what I thought I was doing when I got the job. In a statement to CBS News, Kellogg's notes the union agreed to a two-tier system in 2015, which the company says is not unusual in any industry as a way to control rising benefit costs. Critics like Rick Wartsman say that's both true and the problem. America was more of a we culture. And in more recent decades, I think we've become an I culture. Wartsman is the author of The End of Loyalty, The Rise and Fall of Good Jobs in America. 
He details why wages for the typical worker rose right alongside productivity after World War II, but writes that more recently, the corporate compact has come completely undone. How big of a deal was it for this compact to break down? For it to break down, it's a huge deal. Tony, th this last you know, 40, 50 year period, we have left so many people trailing so far behind. Wartsman blames familiar changes like automating jobs and moving them overseas. But he also points to a shift in the culture of business itself, tying CEO pay to the stock price and valuing investors ahead of everyone else. So there's a real, frankly, personal incentive for all too many to try and do all kinds. So this is revolutionary levels of inequality. I just want to remind you, we've never been in this place before where this much wealth has been accumulated in this few people's hands. If you were still slaving away working 40, 50 hours and you don't have children, yeah, I'm there with you. There's no point you should get on this hamster wheel. The, the contract has been broken. You're wasting your life. It's really sad, really sad. Kinds of things to see the share price go up and worry a lot less about those on the front lines. Well, I got a check stub here. Folks like Dijon Lucius yeah. say they've noticed the same thing. So the money that's not in this check, the money that's not going into your household right here, where is it going? It's going to the CEO and the shareholders. Hundreds of Kellogg's employees, including those grandfathered in to a better deal. How many people here are so-called legacy employees? So most of you have been on the picket line since October, part of a national wave of strikes and outright resignations. What's in it for you in this fight? If you already have the benefits and, and the money. I want my niece and nephews to have what I have. Right. Yep. My children. I love my job. We're doing it for the next my generation. neighbors. Yep. My neighbor's kids. But with many everyday Americans fed up, the question is, where can they really go? Among the 10 jobs that will add the most positions in America this decade are home health aides, fast food workers, and general laborers with a median salary of just over $30,000 a year. That means many Americans like Dijon Lucius aren't left with a lot of good options for good jobs. If you don't do this, what are you going to do? I have no idea. I don't think it will be any good paying jobs. This is an example of what I think everybody needs to fight for. So good paying jobs and where are they? That's the question here. And I just want to underscore that none. a big takeaway is that while there is job growth in our country, there is a huge gap between the jobs that Nowhere. pay well and the ones that don't. So we just put that Nowhere. graphic up that talked about jobs like home health aides and fast food workers. The typical salary for those jobs and the top 10 jobs that are going to grow the most and that you don't need a college degree for, Shit the typical jobs. salary is $28,000 a year, jobs. actually just shy of that. That is many thousands of dollars less than what is considered to be a living wage. Researchers at MIT say that's about $34,000. So there's a big gap there. And we're talking about $16 an hour. It's not a huge number. So but finding a job without more schooling that will pay you at least that is really hard to do in this country. And there are a lot of reasons, but one big one that experts point to is that there is an incentive for executives and people at the top to prioritize investors and not their workers. Mm. Mm. It's a big issue. It's a very interesting question about living wage because it depends on where you live. To live here in New York City, that would be very tough to live on $28,000 a year, especially if you're married and you have a family. I don't wanna hear her. Look, this shouldn't even be a freaking problem. It's like living through the Great Depression. It's like that. And it's a large reason why a lot of my generation is single. I'm just gonna go out on a, on a tangent and say, if you don't have the mobility to move to a higher place of opportunity, to have more opportunity to meet partners that you might have romantic interest in, because the system is so unequally skewed towards giving wealth and riches to the few percent. Lack of empathy, lack of connection, it's a failed society. It is failing, failing us, okay? And they talk towards then maybe there'll be a change. If there hasn't been a change yet since 19, we missed the mark. All right, let's build a Eskimo community in Alaska or the Arctic. What's left? Sounds cool. Thanks for watching. Just want to let you know. I'm thankful to, to all my subscribers. Thank you. Bye.